One of the largest provinces of China is at the same time one of the most sparsely populated areas in the world. Qinghai, also known as Kokonor, is a place I bet you never heard of. So hold on tight, cause it's about to get interesting. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Fact. Located high on the Tibetan Plateau, Qinghai is not the most welcoming place on Earth, that's for sure. The average elevation is around 3000 meters above sea level, although that goes up to almost 7 kilometers. That means long and cold winters, short and chilly summers, heavy winds and sometimes even sandstorms. This is the main reason why most of the 720,000 square kilometers of Qinghai are almost empty. Less than 6 million people live here and nearly half of them are in the capital. But the landscapes are, well, they're paradise level beautiful. And there's also a mixture of ethnic groups, some you heard of, some you didn't. In fact, only half of all Qinghai residents are Han Chinese. Now, let's take a trip down memory lane and explore a bit of Qinghai's history. Despite being a not so welcoming desolate place, Qinghai has been a target of many strong empires. For instance, the Tuyuhun Empire, a country that you probably never heard of, dominated Qinghai from the 3rd all the way to the 7th century AD. These were the first known people who managed to unify these parts of Inner Asia. The southern part of the Silk Road was also developed thanks to them. While they did subjugate the local tribes that were already there, those were not their main enemy. That spot was reserved for the Tibetans, who had their own empire, and the Tang dynasty. Both began to harass the Tuyuhuns because they controlled some pretty crucial trade routes. The fights were not small-scale by any measure. Hundreds of thousands fought in these wars, but in the end, their empire fell and their people split and were lost in the shadows of history. Then came the Tibetans, and the Chinese, and the Mongols, and at one point, Chinese Muslim warlords took over and effectively controlled this province. More on that in a bit. For a while, Qinghai was even a country on its own the Horshut Khanate, a Mongol kingdom that lasted until 1717. Eventually, Qinghai came under the firm control of the more recent Qing dynasty, and while local ethnic groups enjoyed much autonomy, trouble eventually came. In the late 19th century, not one, but two revolts of the Muslims, the Dungan Revolt, rocked Qinghai. In the late 1930s, Tibet again invaded but failed to defeat the locals, who at this point were under the control of the aforementioned warlords. Warlords who remained in control right up until the Chinese Civil War saw the communists taking China over. Once that happened, yet another Muslim insurgency broke out and lasted for 8 years, and ever since, the communists managed to keep control of Qinghai. Qinghai's capital city is ancient Xining. Historically, it was a part of Gansu, but since 1928, it's been assigned to its current host province. For a very long time, Xining was a major trade hub on the Heshi Corridor, a major part of the famed Silk Road. If you plan to visit, first make sure your lungs are okay. Xining sits at an average altitude of 2.2 kilometers. Thanks to its history, Xining has long been a center of Buddhism and Islam and is to this day an ethnically rich and diverse city where no less than 37 nationalities reside. Xining is certainly not a top tier city of China and is far removed from the hustle and bustle of the country's metropolis, which might work in its advantage. You get the chance to discover the real stories of China without its typical attention grabbing tourist traps. The largest and highest plateau in the world, and one of the remotest places on Earth, is in Qinghai. The Hochschil region is as big as Austria and sits above 4,800 meters above sea level. The mountainous areas and grasslands of Hochschil are pretty much unaffected by any human activities and thus it became a safe haven for lots of plants and animals, at least the ones that can endure this environment. And it is a rough place for sure. Average temperatures range between 4 and minus 9 degrees Celsius, and that's the average. Sometimes it can go as low as minus 45. For this reason, Hochschil remains the third largest uninhabited area in the world. 
but it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and protected by law from human activities. Now, about those Muslim warlords. From 1919, following the collapse of China's last imperial dynasty, the Qing, several provinces fell into the hands of some warlords. There were three main families of Hui, or Muslim Chinese descent, with each controlling one of three areas, Qinghai, Gansu and Ningxia. Collectively, they were known as the Maklik. These warlords started out as generals in the military and declared their allegiance to the newly founded Republic of China. In the wars that followed, against the Tibetans, Communists or the Japanese, for instance, they did fight on China's side, but other than that, these warlords were effectively the undisputed rulers of their provinces. Qing Kai's leader was Ma Bufang, who took control after 1937 from his uncle and remained in power until the Communists won the civil war in 1949. He was considered a reformer and modernizer, implementing reforestation projects, expanding education and women's rights, patronizing the arts and investing in the industrialization of Qinghai. Out of all the warlords, Ma Bufang was considered to be the most friendly and far less brutal than the others. That being said, you wouldn't want to stand against him. He was a warlord after all. Anyway, Ma Bufang fled Qinghai in 1949 when the Chinese communists approached his lands. He and his forces did put up a fight, but at this point it was a losing battle against the People's Liberation Army. So Bufang, together with some 200 relatives and subordinates, fled to Hong Kong, then Saudi Arabia, never to return to China again. His forces though continued the fight. The Kuomintang Islamic insurgency broke out in 1950 and lasted for eight years and Ma Bufang's former army was a major combatant in that revolt. Qinghai was named after a special place, a lake nearly six times as big as New York. Qinghai Lake is the largest lake in the whole of China. Now, you could call it the Blue Sea or the Green Sea and you wouldn't be wrong in either case. In the past, there was no distinction between these two colors in Chinese, with the word Qing covering both shades. Anyway, Qinghai Lake was once regarded as one of China's four legendary seas, four bodies of water that metaphorically made up the boundaries of ancient China. The other seas were the East China Sea, the South China Sea and Lake Baikal was the North Sea. In fact, the land within the four seas, Sihai, was once the literal name for China. Historically, Mongols, Manchus, Han Chinese, Tibetans and many other nations lived on the shores of this lake that of course played a major role in the history of these lands. Nowadays and for many decades now, Qinghai Lake is relatively stable, although its surface area fluctuates a lot due to human activities that negatively affect the influx of freshwater. So as I said, there are less than 6 million people living in Qinghai and yet, this is one of the most diverse provinces in China. Only about 50% of the locals identify as Han Chinese. Tibetans are the second most numerous nation, an ethnic group that of course is sharply distinct from Han Chinese. Their language, art, culture and history are unique and in fact, as you might already know, Tibetans used to have a country of their own in various moments in history. 21% of Qinghai residents identify as Tibetans. The Hui are also a significant minority of Qinghai, making up 16% of the population. They are not a unified ethnic group, but a diverse people whose unifying feature is their Islamic faith. Another unique resident of Qinghai are the Tu or Mongwar people, a Mongolic nation known as the White Mongols. They are believed to be the descendants of the Tuyuhans, who once created an empire in Qinghai. And there are also the Salar, a Turkic nation with a distinct Turkic language, descendants of the Western Turkic Khaganate that once roamed and ruled these parts of Asia. As a result of this mixture, Qinghai is a very unique place in China where you can literally experience vastly different worlds and cultures in one single trip. And that's all for today's episode, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time, bye.